Well, good evening. We want to welcome you to In the Blender with Brandon and Madeline Hyman. I tell you, we're so excited to be with you guys on this evening. Hi, guys. I tell you, this is such a special occasion for us. Uh, we're actually in the process tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday, of celebrating our 20th wedding anniversary as well as my wife's oh. birthday. Yeah. And so we're just so super excited. I tell you, I got caught up in traffic and it just was something getting here. But I was determined to make it here to be with you guys and to share with you. And so listen, we want to welcome you again to In the Blender with Brandon and Madeline Hyman. This is our anniversary and birthday edition. And so we, we just love you guys. We want to thank you for... Uh, this past year, every Tuesday at 7.30, viewing with us, uh, encouraging us, pushing us on. I tell you, we've been getting so many praise reports. So many people have been blessed by this broadcast. And I tell you, we're just super excited to be with you guys. Um, sweetheart, get a, give them a... Uh, some I'm statistics gonna, real quick. Okay, okay I'm just going to go back over the ones we did last week. Yes, please. Uh, younger children tend to adapt and adjust better to a blended family than older children. Older, An older child is more likely to be resentful of his, formerly, his or her uh, newly formed family or step-parent. The attitude of both parents play a huge role in how the child will adjust to the blended family. Parents who demonstrate negativity or talk badly about the step-parent will make the transition more difficult for their children. When parents do this, children feel they may need to choose sides or keep loyalty to a biological parent. And then lastly, many blended, many blended families report being happy and are able to make their unique situation work. Yes, and so again, every week we share with you guys some awesome t statistics that you can just relate to. You can see where you are as it relates to the blended family dynamic, uh, some of the adjustments that you need to make, and some of the things that you need to build upon. And so, hey, Ma, hey, how you Ma. doing? And so we're just so, I mean, again, um, the only thing I could think of is excitement, you know, because we've been so blessed through this ministry gift of In the Blender. And I'm telling you, countless people uh, you guys that watched last week, we had an awesome guest on last week, Mr. Mm -hmm. Walter Clock. Uh, that's my main man right there. He allowed me to he allowed me the opportunity to assist in raising his daughters, and so I was just so excited to have him on and to share some some nuggets with you guys. Uh, he's definitely a piece of my puzzle. Uh, he's assisted me over the years, giving me wise counsel, uh, encouragement things that I should do. He just kind of said, hey, man, won't you try it this way? Won't you think about looking at it from this point of view or this perspective? And so it did my heart so much joy to have him on last week. So if you missed that episode, oh, yeah. you want to go on Facebook, you want to go to our Facebook page, or YouTube. Oh, YouTube. It's on YouTube. You want to mm -hmm. go, you want to look at it, you want to make sure that you check it out, because I'm going to tell you something. It's just was awesome. And he enjoyed it too. I mean, yes. he was really excited. Exactly. He sent you a text the next day. Because <laughs> <laughs> he had no idea. You know, we, we didn't talk about uh, extensively how the broadcast was going to be, what it was going to entail. Right. I just asked him, I said, listen, I've been talking about you so much and I would love to have you on Facebook Live with me so that the people can put a face to this this conversation piece. Right. Because a lot of times you hear a person talk about some things and it kind of sounds like, yeah, they just yapping off at the mouth and we don't really know if that's true or not. But when you are able to put a face to that story and that individual tell you about the relationship that we have, it, it, it just, it seals the deal mm -hmm. because it's no more thinking that this individual is just saying something, be saying it because it sounds good. But now you have a person live and in living color, and they're telling you the exact same thing. Hey, Matt, what's going on? Yeah, and so 
It was so awesome to tell you. I've just been, I mean, people been stopping me, calling me, texting me, talking about last week's broadcast. Yeah. And so listen, you want to make sure that you go to uh, Facebook. You want to go to our Facebook page and go to In The Blender page, or you can go on YouTube. We actually go to YouTube because we really want to build that community up. Yeah. And so just like with this, okay. and I'm telling you, it's just so awesome. So you want to make sure that you do that. I'm telling you, Walter Clark came through. The man has That's some good. nuggets. He has some insight. And I'm telling you something. It's I'm excited just, about coming back on with you again. Yes, we're trying to lock in the date. So it's going to be real soon, guys. We're going to lock in the date and get him back on. Because I'm going to tell you something. He had a ball. I mean, people on his job was talking about it. It just was phenomenal. And yeah, so we're yeah. so excited. But this is our anniversary and a birthday edition. Again, tomorrow we'll be celebrating 20 years. Yep. 20 years of this blended family dynamic. And then on Thursday is my wife's birthday. And so we got a double a double dipper going on. And I'll tell you something. I'm just so excited. You know, I got us some little balloon loons behind big us. Balloons. With some big balloons. Pop me all in the head. <laughs> and so, you know, we just going to have a ball. We're going to go spend some time together and just enjoy on each other. But Thank you, Matt. we wanted to really Thank just you, take this opportunity to just talk to each other. We don't we haven't really talked to each other on a broadcast before. Well we ain't really talking to each other. I'm gonna ask you some questions. You and I'm gonna ask you some questions. So we're gonna no, talk to each other. I'm asking you questions. You told me get you questions. Yeah. You're not asking me no but questions. But I'm gonna ask you tonight. some questions. No, absolutely not. Because I'm not so, answering no so questions. So we're gonna talk to each other tonight. And mm -hmm. uh yeah, we're just going to have an awesome time. You know, 20 years, we got a lot to talk about um, with each other, concern each other, about each other. And I think you guys will really enjoy it. So, uh, Spio, what's, what's your first question? <laughs> now, my question is about blended family. I don't know Go what ahead. your question is about. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll okay, ask. my first question to you was, what were some of the steps that you took, if any, coming into the blended family? Like what were some before. of the steps yeah. that I took, if any, coming into the blended family? Um, the first step I did was I sat down with uh, their father, the girl's father. For me, that was paramount. Um, I'm an alpha male. Anybody know me, they know I'm an alpha male or roof, you know. And so I had to make sure that, and I knew he was, and I know he's an alpha male. And so I had to make sure that uh, we were on the same page as it relates to the uh, the rearing of the, the girls. Mm -hmm. And so that was the first, and for me, one of the first and most important steps that I had to take because I didn't want us to be in uh, a relationship where I'm constantly battling with this guy and I'm constantly trying to, uh, you know, prove I'm the man of my house. Right. I didn't, and I've seen a lot of people deal with that in relationship and marriage and in blended families. And I just knew right from the door that was something that I didn't want to deal with. And so that was one of the biggest steps that I made uh, that I took as related to the blended family. I wanted to make sure that we were on the same page, uh, that there was no uh, animosity, no anger, no frustration, no jealousy, no envy. Because, you know, people deal with a lot of that stuff when it comes to the blended family. Um, you know, you got guys that, you know, they, they want to try little things. So I had to make sure that we had to understand about, you know, who 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 we could talk to and who we couldn't talk to. Uh, one of the things that I did was I made sure that, and I think this helped a lot, I made sure that he had access to the girls. Right. And so that was another step that I made, accessibility. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that he had access to the girls whenever he needed access. Um, as a father, as a parent, you always need access to your children. And so I didn't want him to feel as if, you know, because they were in my home, that he couldn't come and see them whenever he wanted to see them. Right. Or that, you know, he, he that when he came to see them, he had to stand outside. No, you don't have to stand outside. Your daughter's in the house. You can come in the house. And so those were some of the steps that I took um, as related to the blended family. Okay. 
Um, question number two. Go ahead. Go what was the... One. No, you don't got none. I said I'm not <laughs> answering any questions. You answering questions. What was the most challenging for you is, on, when you on. first... Hold on. This is the anniversary birthday edition. Right. So it's my so, week. I'm double up. So you answering the questions. That don't sound right. Hello, Will. Love you. <laughs> don't sound right at all. What was the most challenging for you when you first entered into this blended family what was your what was most challenging do you think um hmm that's a great or question. a challenging factor no it could be the most challenging um i think the most challenging thing for me was time uh, okay. and to be uh specific with that uh time for myself as well as time with you and then time with the girls um, I was an extremely busy person when we first met. And oh, so yeah. um, when we first met, I was on the road almost 40, almost 50 weeks of the year. I was on the road doing crusades. And so when we got together, one of the things that you let me know right off the bat was, if we're going to be married, uh, we, we're going to have to make some adjustments. And so that was time. But also, too, the fact that you come from a large family, and I come from a small family. What I mean by that is you have a lot of siblings, and I only have one. Mm -hmm. And so with me and my sister, we're 10 years apart, me being the elder statesman. And so I was always used to being by myself. Don't, don't, don't hate. <laughs> don't hate. Just pick up, you know. Don't hate. And so I was always used to being by myself, doing things by myself. I could do that. I mean, even to this day. I'm comfortable in my own skin. I'm comfortable with spending time with myself. But that time piece was me now having to share that time. So I had to one, share that time with you. Hey, Ethan. Hey, Ethan. I had to one, share that time with you and then share that time with the girls. And so that was one of the biggest, wow, uh, things that I faced. Adjustments or whatever you want to call it when it came to the blended family. Because I didn't know how to do that. I wasn't good at that. And consequently, um, early on, we had a lot of issues that arose because I just wasn't good with that time. I wasn't good with sharing that time. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's okay, good. question number three. Okay, you better go. I'm going to throw a question in here. I'm not going to answer it. Oh, you going to answer my question. Um, looking <laughs> back 20 years ago, what is one thing that you wish you would have done differently? Wow. If anything at all. Looking back 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. What is one thing that you wish that you would have done differently? Hmm. I wish I would have invested more time with the girls. Very early on. Um... At that particular time, I was a youth pastor, and I spent a lot of time with children, but I didn't spend a lot of time with my own. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, it, it, people say no regrets. That would be a regret for me because I could have... Be, we, now, let me be clear. We have an awesome relationship. Mm -hmm. Awesome relationship. My girls... Hi, you know, Me and my girls have an awesome relationship, all three of them. But... If I would have known then what I know now, or what I know now, I would have made sure I invested that time in them. There were things that they wanted to do. There were things that they were interested in that I didn't give them my full attention. Mm -hmm. I didn't give them my full um, knowledge and my full heart as it related to them and just them. You know, for me, it was more about appearance. And that's one of the reasons why we do in the blender mm -hmm. is because I've been there. I've done that. I was a cat that was so, it was important to me to look the part, but not be the part. And so once I understood that looking the part didn't mean anything, being the part meant everything, things shifted for me. And it didn't take long for it to shift, but I just didn't have that understanding. Mm -hmm. And so... I, I think that, that that would be the thing for me, sweetheart, is that time with the girls. Um, 
building them up, encouraging them, getting behind their dreams, their visions, their aspirations. I remember our, our baby girl, Shia, she she was a sports fanatic. She loved basketball. Mm -hmm. And I, I only think what would have happened if I would have been that sports dad for her. If right. I would have been that dad that made sure she went to basketball practice, that made sure she uh, did, uh, she had a routine that, to improve upon her skills and, and, and show her things that I knew. I was a pretty good ball player. You know, don't get this thing twisted. That Jay was wet. And so, you know, if I if I would have invested that into her, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, hey, we, we could be sitting on the front row watching a WNBA basketball player. And so that was that time piece. And, you know, and so that that I would say that would be it. Okay. That would be it. Can I get my question there? No. Okay. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> Pray for me. Please. I told you I'm asking a question. You only get, got two more. I'm going to get uh, a question. What maybe. is one of the main concerns or complaints that you see or hear about in blended families today? And how would you address that issue, like one complaint that you may see or hear, like, hmm, or in blended families, period. Well, it, there I hear a lot. I really hear a lot. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things I hear is, you know, um, especially with men, you got guys that that are now raising or assisting in raising another man's son. And so there are a lot of men that aren't confident in themselves. There are a lot of men that aren't confident in their relationship with their child. That's one thing I, I love about my relationship with Walter is the fact that he was confident in his relationship with his girls. Mm -hmm. I mean, they worshiped the ground that this man walked mm -hmm. on. And so he was confident in that. It wasn't no problem. He, he I could have bought them all. 10 carat diamond rings and he still would have been the champ. <laughs> so, you know, it just was one of those things where I, I, I didn't have anything coming. So I just had to learn how to play my role. Mm -hmm. But you got a lot of men that are dealing with issues like that where you have another man's child that you're assisting in upbringing and you're assisting in, in teaching them and raising them. And that man isn't confident enough to allow you to assist him. Because somewhere, mm -hmm. some, somewhere deep down in his warped imagination, he thinks you're there to replace him. And we're never there to replace, we're there to assist. Right. And so I hear a lot of that. Um, I hear a lot of the discipline, mm -hmm. you know, as far as it relates to discipline. Again, one of the things that Walter said is they in your home, you know, you, you got free course. Now, there are some things that I wish... He would have dropped on me, <laughs> you know, or somebody would have dropped on me as related to that mm -hmm. because there were some things that I wouldn't have done. Right. But he was confident. Again, he was confident in that relationship that that didn't bother him. Right. And so you got a lot of men that say, that's my child. You don't discipline him. Yes, that's your child. You're absolutely correct. And there should be a structure right. as it relates to discipline. Let me make that clear. There should be a structure as it relates to discipline, and you guys should have a full out conversation as to who's Ooh. going to discipline, uh -huh. when discipline yeah. is going to be done, and how it's going to be done. Mm -hmm. But don't just take a position that this is my child and I'm going to do this or that, because now you're robbing both the uh, the additional parent, mm -hmm. the blended parent, as well as that child of a relationship. Mm -hmm. You're robbing them because discipline is a part of relationship. It's a part of it. And so I hear those things. So those, those, those are some of those are, I would say, two of the biggest uh, issues that I hear about. Okay. And then the last one I have for you is what are some tips some time. <laughs> or principles? Let me, let me ask my question then before you. Uh, what? What? Okay. So, if you had to do this all over again, looking back 20 <laughs> years later. <laughs> yes, I, that's, that's what I was looking for right there. If you had to do this all over again, 
what would be two of the things that you would do differently as relates to the blended family? One of the first things that I would do is I would have tried, I, I would try to seek. Okay. So that would be like not knowing what I know now. Right. I'm, you just asked some questions. I don't, you, you, you. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll go with it. If, if it's like not knowing what I know now, I would seek counseling or seek advice on how to work this blended family. Okay. And then secondly, and because we pretty much dealt with that, I would sit down with the with you and talk about discipline. <laughs> discipline was big, guys. We gonna have an episode on discipline. Oh Lord, it was because you no, guys... because you know, like really, no, like sit down and talk about like once you came in and like tell you like how we do things. You know, this is how we do things. What's the plan going forward on how we going to kind of shift things around or change things a little bit instead of the way that it was. Like we had a way and then our way was kind of just wiped out. So just sitting down, having a conversation about the blended family on discipline and how this is going to work and who's going to do what. Just the whole conversation about blended family. Yes, because all three of my daughters got me. Are we 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 we, we going to talk about that 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 <laughs> discipline piece? Because all three of them, one of them hit me in the head with a shoe. <laughs> one of them tried to set me on fire, <laughs> and the other one tried to battle me. So we gonna <laughs> we gonna talk about that. You guys have no. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. We got some uh, stories to tell you guys. Uh, it is hilarious. Funny. That was funny. It is hilarious. It's funny now looking back, but it, it was really funny wasn't. Then. It really wasn't at that at at that particular time. I can't say that it was, was laughing. the funny part. No, the funny only, only one thing was funny, and when that she was when she, yes. The other part. Oh, when, hold on. How is because, somebody trying to set somebody on fire? How is that funny? Because that was, at that particular time, it was like an accident. It wasn't and an I, accident. <laughs> we used to grill every day. I asked her to start the grill up. I asked, no, I asked her to put the coal on and get everything set for me. And I was going to light it and then start cooking. And so she used a yes, whole Robert. bottle a whole uh, container of lighter fluid. It's a can, ain't it? A, no. A tin. It's a come in a tin thing, don't it? Lighter well, fluid. the whole thing of lighter fluid. Yeah, she pretty much wow. used the whole container <laughs> on the on the charcoal, <laughs> and when I lit it, it lit me. And so they, but they thought that was funny. It so, was. Yeah, that exactly. Was funny. But we'll talk about that because we're gonna have an episode about that. We're gonna tell you guys how we overcame that, and it was so smooth, man. Your boy smooth. So it, it was so smooth how it worked out. She knew it. <laughs> you better be smooth. But they had set you up in this family. <laughs> you better step your game up, boy. This family is rough. They don't that, play. The shoe in the head. I shoe think we in were coming head. in the house from church that day. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, it, every incident happened after after church. Yep. <laughs> I guess I wasn't praying hard enough. <laughs> 20 years ago, 20 oh, years man. ago. My God. Oh, boy. Okay, it's 7.55. Okay. Can I ask you this last question? No, I'm going to ask you a question. No, I got to ask you this last one. 7.55. We only got five minutes. Okay, this is just because tomorrow is your anniversary. I'll let you slide. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. What are some tips or principles that you can share with other blended dads or parents on starting the blended family off right? Number one, talk to everyone. Mm -hmm. so Sit down and have a conversation. Communication is key. It's imperative that you sit down with your wife-to-be, with your children-to-be, and with the exes. I don't care how difficult you think things may be or appear, it's important. 
I don't care how much you think you accomplish, it's still important. Communication is key. Yeah. That's paramount. You got to have that conversation. Because um, you, you want to you wanna know expectations. Mm -hmm. You want to know perceptions. Mm -hmm. Because perceptions are reality. And so it's important to understand everybody's perception as relates to this blended family. What do you see this as? How do you see this working? What do you think needs to um, happen? Mm -hmm. What do you th see? What do you believe we need to do? Mm -hmm. What do you think we should not do? This type of conversation should be held with every single person involved, and it's important for the exes or the biological parents because they play an important role. Right. Your response is your responsibility. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're not going to deal with the mature ex or mature biological parent. Sometimes you are, right. but it's still your response. It's still your responsibility. One of the things that I did, write that down for y'all real quick. One of the things that I did was I was the communicator. I'm a great communicator. I had to learn how to communicate because a hot head got me in trouble years ago. And so I had to learn how to really use my brain instead of using my fist. And so I was the communicator. I can communicate with the biological dad, I could communicate with the biological mom. Hey, and so I made sure that I was the one that I told my wife from the door, I would be that individual that do that. And so what was that so question? So I had a question. Do you have to talk to them one-on-one -on -one or as a family? It depends. Mm -hmm. There's nothing with talking to everyone as a family. And there's nothing with talking to each, ind each individual one-on-one. -on -one. You really got to gauge that. Yeah. You have to gauge that. Um, there's no fine, um, definitive line as it relates to that. Um, but you still need to have that conversation piece regardless, whether they're all together. And all together sometimes help because everybody can exactly. then begin to right. express, express some things. Mm -hmm. And then you all can kind of put that together and then build a format as to how we're going to go from there. Mm -hmm. But that one-on-one -on -one piece is important because... Yep. Everybody is different, and everybody responds and relates differently. Right. And so understanding that gives you an understanding that it's like with the girls. Some, some of them, I could just go at them like, hey, get it together. But, and then there are other ones that I got a boo-boo, poo-poo, and all that too. And then there's some that I just can look at and, be, you know, and just give a facial expression, and results come up. So everybody is different. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn that early on because I would relate to everybody the same way. And my wife would say, you, you can't talk to her like that. Or you can't respond to her like that. Or you can't do that. And so, <laughs> right. and so, and so it's, that's, it's very important. It's very important. So um, I hope that answered your question, Rhonda. I hope that answered your question. Any other questions in the last few minutes? We'll take a couple of questions if anybody else have a couple of questions. Any other questions? Any other questions? And so I do have a question. For who? For you. Yes. <laughs> What's the question? 20 years later. Mm -hmm. 20. What do you think is... Your, your biggest accomplishment from a blended family standpoint? Wow. That's hard. What do I think is my biggest accomplishment? Yes. Your biggest success story from, from the blended family standpoint 20 years later. I would really... Oh. Gee, that, that's really hard for me. That's a good question, right? It, it is. It really is a good question. Um, because you kind of used the word already, successful. We, we overcame every single obstacle that we dealt with throughout the 20 years and still standing. And it's not like we still don't have things because now we got 
grown children, grandchildren. grandchildren. <laughs> so, you know, just just that we were able to um overcome and still be standing. Okay, hold on. Oh. Let's get this last question from Ida. What do what do you do with your new spouse who doesn't want to get to know or deal with the ex? Ida, what you do is you be the person that deal with them both. You be that individual. Sometimes you're going to have that. Um, and again, it's all about maturity. Yep. It really is. And sometimes, you know, men and women, they don't want to accept the fact that they could be immature as it relates to this. But when you, when what you want is bigger than what you want, hmm. that's good. you'll do whatever it takes to be successful. When what you want is bigger than what you want, you'll do whatever it takes. What I wanted was success. I'm success driven. And so because I wanted success, I, I, I made myself want to do certain things. Now, there were times in my flesh that I didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. But guess what? I had to mm -hmm. because I wanted to be, I wanted to 20 years later tell you guys about an awesome man named Walter Clark. Right. I didn't want to have a conversation where I can't stand this guy and, you know, we, we don't never talk because I, I, I got another story like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I wanted that success piece. Right. Even when it, even as it relates to my son's mother, mm -hmm. the Bible says, "If it possible, be at peace with oh, all men." Yep. And so I kept a peaceful relationship with her. Yep. I knew there were conversations that we could have, and there were conversations that we couldn't have. I knew that there were times when we could talk, and there were times that we couldn't talk. And so I knew where to draw that line in the sand. Now, sometimes I had to assist her. And knowing where that line was. Right. But I knew where that line was. And I was mature enough to point the line out. Right. And so sometimes you just got to be the big one. And you got to be the mediator in between the two. And don't make it. Listen, watch this. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than him. And it's bigger than him. It's about the family. And so once you keep the family my family is blessed because of my stance and my position on both sides. Mm -hmm. My wife family loves me. My family loves me. <laughs> Everybody respects me and they honor me. Now, some might don't like certain things that I may say or do, but they yeah. still honor and respect because they know my stance. My stance is righteous. I don't play around on my wife. I don't cheat on my wife. I don't got no girlfriends. I don't got no side pieces. She all of those and the above. And so everybody knows that. This my girlfriend, this my boo thing, this my baby, this my sweetheart, this my sugar, sugar mama, sugar honey, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. That's what she is. And so because of that, they know. But right. you have to, you're gonna have to be the one that's gonna be the big one in this for right now. Until he grows up and takes his place. Right. So I I, I hope that helped. <laughs> well, listen. Oh, it's eight oh five. It's eight oh five. You know, we're, we're talking with you guys. Does anybody have any more questions before we go? We can take one more, one more. <laughs> but that was a good question. That if really was. Asked. Thank that you was so much question. for asking that question. Because again, we actually grew up together. They okay. Live right down the bottom of the hill, where Grandma lived. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you remember when she used to eat dirt? I'd have probably used to eat them mud cakes too. <laughs> I'd have. Did you used to eat those mud cakes too? <laughs> oh, God. You weren't supposed to tell nobody that we did that. Hey, God made dirt, dirt don't hurt. Well, I don't think I would eat it now. You kiss it up to God. You did know? what you do. Oh, boy. That's funny. She said, you, said, you know, know I did. I did. <laughs> Listen, guys, we thank you so much for tuning in to In the Blender with Brandon and Madeline Hyman. This is our anniversary and birthday edition. We'll pick back up our regular scheduled programming on next week. But we just love you guys. 
we just wanted to share from our heart as it relates to the blended family. Tomorrow is 20 20 years, years y'all. 20 years. 20 years. Not 20 days, not 20 weeks, not 20 months, 20 but 20 years. years. It don't even seem like it. On one hand, it, it don't seem like it's been 20 years, but then it's like you look at it and be like, wow, 20 years. But it still don't, seem, it like still don't seem like 20 years. And we don't look like we've been married 20 years. No. Thank so, you, Ada. Yeah. And so we're excited. We just want to share with you guys. We love you. Thank you for all of your support. Yes. We thank, thank you, you for guys. viewing us every week. Listen, don't forget to view and share. We know you guys thank are you, viewing. Thank you, cousin Michelle. Make sure, hey, Michelle. Make sure you're sharing. There's so many people, guys, that's out here that need this information. There's so many people that's love struggling too, as thank it relates you. to the blended family. So we want to make sure that we're giving you guys some solid foundational tools that you can build upon. Because I'm going to tell you something. There are some things that we're going to share with you guys in 2018. You're just not going to believe that we're still standing. You're not going to believe it. But we love you guys. We thank you. And we're going to close with our final thought. Okay. Always remember that every family is different and may have different challenges. So every blended family challenge should be addressed individually depending upon the challenge. The personalities are different. So you want to use measures that work for you. One of the main things you should always do is keep the lines of communication open in the blended family. Parents should always show unity. Let me say that again. Parents should always show unity in front of the children, even if they secretly don't agree. Showing that you are unified diffuses the enemy's attacks in the blended family. Lastly, you want to always demonstrate patience. Having patience to work through the difficult challenges in the blended family will bring about a happy blended family. And remember, you became a blended family because, because you, you chose, chose to, to now, now choose to be, be successful. successful. We love you Thank guys. You, Ethan. Thank you everybody for viewing. Thanks, everyone. Don't forget to share. And until next week, bye bye. Mm -hmm.